Hello everyone, and welcome to part three of the Asteroids miniseries. Since the last time I did a very small refactor, I didn't end up needing to make a time lapse out of it. It was really nothing. I created this draw line angle function, which allows me to give a position, an angle, a length and a thickness, and it's going to just draw like a projectile, which we're going to use for the projectiles in this, because I, I prefer when they're kind of a, a little bit of a, a line. So it's just going to rotate and draw that as we need. Uh, I'll have to modify this a little bit to allow for color and stuff like that. It's more of just the debug thing for now. And I'm testing it here based on the player's rotation. I'll show that in a second. But I also fixed the issues where we needed to use like an offset of the player rotation. So you can see the player now starts with a rotation of zero. And when we were drawing the player, well, here in the face and rotation, I had to use a negative. There was also, oh, well, when we turn, I was doing having to do a subtraction right here that's now a plus again so i believe now the angle you know what you see is actually what you get so that's a bit of a relief if i just quickly build here i can show you the line so here it's drawing a line from the player and then in the direction the player is facing with a particular thickness and length so in this video i want to add projectiles so the first thing i'm going to do is add a projectile struct in source i will just go projectile.c and projectile.h the usual we've done this enough times by now i feel like i don't need to explain what i'm doing As has been the pattern up to now, every struct has had a position. This is no different. We'll also give it a rotation as we've been doing. And one of the main differences, we actually don't need a piece of information such as the velocity because we can actually determine it from the rotation every frame. I will include a bool active just like with the asteroids because I'm going to have a similar structure with how they're stored. Not much that needs to go in this create. I guess I'm really just creating a way to avoid needing to use this syntax by making it a function. I probably don't want it to be void. And of course, I don't want this to be in here at all. I want the definition to actually be in here. There we are. Uh, I forgot as well here, I also wanted a creation time, just like with the asteroids. Which I can just use the current time when it's actually built. And to update a projectile, we're just gonna wanna update their position. Now at this point, I'm gonna define a projectile speed. I'll make it 400. Hopefully that's not going to be too fast as a starting value. I want to use cosine, so I'm going to include math.h. Earlier I was showing that I was rotating a particular vector to be able to get an angle. This is basically how it works under the hood, and I just try to like to show multiple implementations whenever I can. So if you have an angle, uh, you can basically build a vector from it by using cos and sine. So cos of this and sine of this will naturally give us the components of a normalized vector, and then I'm multiplying them by projectile speed so that I can add that to the position. I do not want to forget to use frame time, or these guys are going to move way too quick. Projectiles are going to have a very short life. I'll just go two seconds for now. I'm remembering that with my asteroid example, I wanted this to actually return bool so that when I update a projectile, I can report whether or not it was active or not. So I've just added that in. And of course, I got to remember to add the early out if the projectile is not active in the first place. Lastly, we just need the draw projectile, and that's when I'm going to want to steal this code right here. So the projectile has a position. That's true. The thickness and length, we're just going to hard code these in. I don't want it to be too big, so I'm going to go 10 by 30 for now. I'm going to treat the position of the projectile as being the center of the line. All that's missing is the angle, which is projectile.rotation. And I should probably define a color for this as well. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make my own color. So there's our projectile draw. We have projectile update. Let's make sure this is in the header. Projectile update, projectile draw, create projectile. So this is everything we need. Unlike with my previous implementation when I was doing the asteroid, I'm going to dive straight into getting the projectile list working and try to hook everything all up at once. I figure since we're already on part three, I don't need to go so slow with everything.
So when we want to add a projectile, we have this bool created, which starts off at false. We iterate over all of the projectiles, looking for one that is not active. If we find one that's active, we can just continue. If we reach this point in the block, that means that the current projectile is inactive. So we can safely populate it with a new projectile. We can set create it to true, and we can break out of this loop to avoid filling the rest of the array. If we fail to create one, we will use this trace log. I'm not going to use it for anything yet, but I am going to add this int projectile count zero, and I'll increment it each time one of these returns true. The logic here is pretty much exactly the same, except we use the draw. And of course, I forgot once again to add this early out to the draw. So there we go, we have our add projectile, update projectiles, and draw projectiles. Now player C is going to need to include game projectiles. Because after all of this, in this update method, we want to check if the player is pressing what will be the fire button. And if so, we want to fire a projectile. I'm going to have this thing spit out the facing direction because it'll make part of this a little bit easier. When we press space, I can add a projectile, which is at the player's position plus the direction they're facing, and I can pass in the player rotation. I can take this one step further by adding a vector to scale on the facing direction and putting in some kind of player projectile offset. For now, I'll just make it match player radius. Now all that's left is I'm going to want to add game projectiles into here. When I update the asteroids, I should also update the projectiles. And when we draw the asteroids, we should draw the projectiles. Okay, so it's kind of working. The projectiles don't seem to have the right... They don't have the right idea, and I know exactly what's wrong. And this is why I just figured I'd write it all at once, and then we'll just debug after. When we're doing this, we need to make sure that we treat this... This is a degree. We need to use a radian. So I'll just go... Let's see, does this take a double? It takes a double. So let's just write radians in here, and we'll go degrees two radians times the projectile's rotation. Then we could just use this value in here directly. Ah, it still seems like it's off. Annoyingly, I have to offset the rotation by 90 degrees. It feels dirty, but at this point, I don't want to spend any more time on it. But now, as you can see, I could fly around and I could create these projectiles, which I'll tell you, they could probably move a little faster. Thankfully, that's an easy thing to change with the way we've set this up. Now here's what's interesting, I can shoot as fast as I want, but I have to wait, because watch, if I spam, watch the, the terminal at the bottom of the screen, if I spam, it's going to fail to create projectiles because there's no inactive spots in the array. Now what I'd like to do is add to the player struct, I'm going to say float last fire time, maybe. When I create the player, I'll just set this to negative 1.0f. In player update, when we check if key is pressed, we can instead check if it's down. If the current time is passed, this plus player fire delay. So only if this time is passed will we allow this to happen. And at this time, we'll update the player's last fire time to the current time. So now I should be able to hold space and I will shoot as fast as I'm allowed. Now keep in mind, the array isn't actually large enough. I'll set this to 12. I might decide that this needs to be balanced. Again, everything is some kind of preprocessor variable, so it'll be easy enough to change that value if I decide it's a little bit overpowered. So now what we need to do every frame is we need the projectile to check all of the asteroids, and if they are colliding, then we need to have them blow each other up. I'm going to add a simple utility to this, which is going to be asteroid radius. And it'll allow us to pass in our asteroid and get the radius. So if we go through and we update every projectile, I'm going to include as a parameter the asteroids. Actually, wait, this is definitely the wrong approach. Let's not do this. I think 
this should be a single asteroid, and I think we should do the loop elsewhere. So we have all I projectiles, and then we have against every I projectile, all J asteroids. If the asteroid is not active, we return false. Otherwise, we do all this work. So if we happen to be colliding with this particular asteroid, then basically we want to destroy that asteroid and destroy this projectile. We actually both die. Both of them will die, which is very sad. We we'll probably also want to have some kind of points earned, and we also want to create the two new asteroids. But for now, I'm just going to worry about destroying the asteroid and destroying the projectile, because I think that will be the simplest outcome. Points earned, create the two new asteroids. We'll leave points earned for last. First of all, let's see if this is working because we've just, we've done a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if some things blew up. Okay. It looks like I can destroy the asteroids by shooting them. I should probably remember I can move around. It's very difficult when you're debugging to remember how the game that you're making works <laughs> sometimes. Okay, cool. Now all that's left is we need to create the two new asteroids. So we have access to the game asteroids. So what we can actually say is I can say destroy asteroid and I can give the index J and I could skip doing what I was doing here. Instead, I will add a void destroy asteroid, which will take an index. I will begin by getting the asteroid and I will set it to be inactive. And then what we need to do is determine which asteroids to make. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch the asteroid size. Now in the case where it is asteroid large, spawn to medium. And in the case where it's asteroid medium, we need to spawn to small. In all other cases, spawn no more. Okay, let's try that. Let's see if that works. Okay, so it kind of works. The only thing is that dish, that add asteroid will always have it head towards the center of the screen. So the only other thing I need to change is I want to have a bool that says spawn. Now in these cases, the value is false because we're not spawning them. But in the case of game projectiles or sorry, game asteroids C, where we update the asteroids. In this case, we want to say true. So in this case, it's an asteroid we're spawning at the uh, boundary of the screen. So where we calculate the angle, so here's where we set the velocity and we figure out the angle. If we're spawning it, we want to do this. But otherwise, we want to do this pretty much exactly what we're doing here. So rotate the velocity by whatever amount except in our case, we just want to go full random, I think, for now. Mm, yeah, for now, let's just go between 0 and 359. You know what? Actually, we don't want to set this here. This is kind of the wrong idea. I want to do this up here. Let's see if that works. Tragic error? No tragic error. OK. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I want to give some kind of control to the, um, like I want to be able to control the speed a little bit. So I'm going to say float speed mod. I have to add this to the header file. I'll never forget to do that, by the way. This is like the most common thing I feel like you could forget. When we spawn them normally, we'll do no modification, and then the other ones will slow them down a little bit. Oh, we're not using it. <laughs> we're not using it. I was like, mm, it doesn't feel like we're any slower. Right, so this speed value here, get random value. I will say speed mod times whatever 
oops, speed mod times this get random value. Oh, holy cow. It's hard, y'all. It's a hard game we've made. But listen, everything's going really well so far. I'm really happy with this. So what have we added today? We've added the projectiles for the player. The projectile checks collision against the asteroids. And when it destroys an asteroid, it splits them into two of whatever the next tier down is. That's it for part three, though. We're coming up on part four, and this is probably the part that takes it from being almost a game to literally a game. So we're going to add score. We're going to add lives, a proper game loop so that when you get hit by a projectile, maybe there is like a, if you get hit by a, a boulder, it kind of knocks you away. And then maybe you, you, you only get so many hits or something. I don't know. We can we can do whatever we'd like, but we're going to add a full gameplay loop to that so that when you die, the game pauses and, you know, there's a kind of brief period. And then, of course, a game over screen. If you want to see more like this, like the video and be sure to subscribe to the channel because Asteroids is not the last game that I'm going to make in Raylib. I've got my own ideas, but I also want to hear from you because you know what you want to see and there's a good chance I can give it to you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.